Hey guys, welcome back to Beast Quest Reviews, or welcome back to Beast Quest, we have another review of course, and this one, continuing on the series 30 books, is uh, Leptica, the Nocturnal Nightmare. And overall I'd say this is probably the best books of the series so far, it would be nice to see how, if, this, if the series finale can surpass this, but I don't expect, I know, I don't really know how it could. Because based on how this plot feels, it feels more like a a decoy plot. Like, it's not really the final battle. There's more to it. There's more going on. There's more plan for Zuba. And this is all like a stepping stone for her. So I don't really understand how it would, ma would you know, make this plan any epic or grand at the end. It'll just probably set up another series. But again, we'll see. As for this book itself, though, like I said, I think it is the best book of the series so far. But that being said, that the competition with it is kind of weak. Makoro had a cool design, but his um, story uh, was... He kind of had an easy streak because like he just walled around, had to go where he needed to go, fight Kadia, and uh, pretty much got taken out when the time was needed. And then you had uh, Hyrex, who again, uh, he rolled off. When he got his power, he tried to fight, and he got tricked into that's, another, that's also a thing i've noticed that most of these beasts get tricked to going somewhere they shouldn't and it backfires then again well hyrix didn't he just got stuff uh some goo fell on him but i think it involved him going someplace to, for that to happen anyway though regardless in-depth story analysis i'm able for it's this epic adventure so if you haven't already make sure you read this book before watching this review unless you don't care for spoilers and with that being said guys let's get into leptica all right uh exposition um, exposition and Tom is taken out to be healed because we're on yeah, that's what our heroes are doing right now. More exposition about the story and of course Tom is being taken to be healed. While Eleanor is in charge, they mention a rival wizard called Stefan. That might come into play in the finals, we'll see, because why else would you bring that up? Um, anyway, carrying on, uh, Lenka uh, is walking on, she bumps into a cellar, mind, and she mind controls him to give him, to give her fruit, and she mocks the cellar by putting water over his head because uh, when she got infected by the po potion that Zuba gave her she was given this mind control ability and she's able to s slowly use that in her human form and she'll later be able to use it in her beast form so there's that for you um yeah Nolan chases Lenka and Nolan's go the eye patch and he's our hero he chases Lenka bumps into the cellar my who's mind controlled he Beats him off because again he's mind controlled and tells him which way the beat, uh, well, Lenka went. So Lenka wanders on woods and notices she has enhanced vision. She heads towards this cave because again she's got, she's got like these uh, bat like tendencies, so nocturnal, makes sense. Um, Zuba checks her progress, that's, what, that's the thing. Zuba is actually now taking part in the story as she was part of the story but she hasn't really been much you know much note before she was gloating but at this point two beasts have failed and now she's a i feel like that's why she wants to check things how they're going per se i think maybe my friend adam had different reasoning why she's doing this but from my point of view that's what i got off of it so she's just checking our progress like two my beasts have failed i wouldn't know what's going on oh then again we don't know what zuba's plot is but regardless i feel like a good villain should like hey if your shit's not really going right you should always check it out see what we, we can do but yeah zuba of course uh, completes the transformation for lenka so lenka but she still has uh, her personality and I don't know if that's Zuba's doing or Lenka is strong willed enough to keep her personality, but it makes more sense if Zuba, you know, if Zuba, you know, kept her personality there to hope victory for this one. That's, it makes the most sense to me. That's just what I'm going to go off. So she kept the personality there. Fi, uh, Lepta, so Leptika is now here. She lure, lures Nolan into the cave and then scam. And then yeah, screams, making rocks fall, and, and Nolan has barely escapes, but so does Leptika, and Nolan calls for help. So I do appreciate this, and I've mentioned this in my uh, discussion with Adam, that I did like that Leptika is able to use the environment to her advantage. It wasn't probably planned out, 
she just saw Nolan screamed and it caused rocks to slide, which is a double thing, because when you're in a cave, that causes either two things. You could either A, crush your opponent, or B, you could also trap them and block the entrances. But regardless, no one was able to escape, but I do it. And unfortunately though, as we carry on, I think most of these events are, she's just observing. It's not like she's smart, it's just that she has got good observation powers, and that's double entendre, as in she's got enhanced vision. But I feel like also, because she has this good vision, she's able to look what she sees and look what she sees in battle and see, see how she can use it. But like I said, again, some of this stuff could be about convenience. But anyway, uh, so Leptika sends bats to blind Nolan. Nolan goes in a, go, go, you know, Nolan goes in. He barely fends off, fends off these bats. And then he goes in after Leptika. They get into a scuffle. She goes for the kill. But Nolan, saved by Eleanor, however, she gets mind control, so we have a useful point for that ability, because you've established this mind control ability, well, you, you can't really use it on the main hero of this book, because if you did, the story would kind of be over there. But, yeah, so that's how it is. I know my friend Adam's going to make some sort of restrictions to uh, Leptika's ability if she was in Battle of the Beasts, and we also, I think in a story reason, we see some sort of reason to her a weakness to her mind control so we'll look forward to that Elena chases Nolan gets knocked out Leptika sends her bats and uses Elena as leverage uh, a lot, uh, while Nolan plans an ambush because that's a thing I do appreciate that uh, throughout this story uh, Leptika has been the one doing these ambushing schemes and she is a nice way to turn it all around is for Nolan to do an ambushing scheme so I know overall for the series that's happened in many stories, but when a story does it on a point where you have a character that's set up for known for doing just these type of ambushing schemes, then the character throws you off guard. It's a nice story perspective from my point of view. So I do like it on that level. Um, no, right. Nolan jumps on Leptika, lifting her in the shoulder. He tells her to yield. Uh, she refuses and tries to mind control him. However, she is too weakened from the hit to keep her concentration on, to keep her concentration on Nolan, and let, so, and then, you know, obviously, Nolan is able to beat Leptika, which reverts her to her human form. Lenka escapes, and our heroes let her go, as there are bigger problems out there, and that's how the story ends. And overall, I would say it's a bit more, I find it a bit more interesting compared to the other two, like I've said, and the whole thing with Lenka being alive at the end, Hopefully that'll come into play as well. We'll see. Um, so I'll go with my thoughts on the characters and probably my overall thoughts on the story, like I said, but we'll see. Um, starting off with uh, Nolan. Uh, Nolan is a good lead, I find. Um, I know me and my friend Adam has gone into a bit of debate if he's, like, the best of the four. Um, some have said, I think my friend has argued that Katya is, or maybe someone else. I know it wasn't Rafe because he doesn't like him much. Um, but yeah. Got notification there, it's fine. Um, but yeah, so um, I do think I like Nolan probably best. Only because of how it, how, and based on how the story played out, for me, it felt like it gave him more story development and certain events played out where I was brooding for him more. But again, this is all a matter of perspective and opinion. So some people might like Rafe more, some people might like Katya more. It all depends on how the story affects the person. And to me, I felt like it affected me. And maybe that's why I'm having a struggling way to explain it to my friend Adam. But again, everyone's feelings are different, so... That's the best way I can put it to him. But yeah. Uh, overall, we're moving on to... Um, I don't want to touch on Zuba much, because you don't really do much just to advance the plot, really. Eleanor is mainly there to be a tool, sadly. She shows up. Helps him with one life life shot because I'm just going to kill him. Eventually he gets mind control and then injured. And yeah, so. Doesn't really do much. Um, which is a shame because Latika, uh, Eleanor is a good character and it's a shame that she, in some books, she has to be put on the sidelines for other characters to be cool. But I understand why because one of my issues with this story, well, this, main, this whole big story in general, was that most of these characters needed 
help from allies to g help get things done. Whereas this one, it felt more to me that, well, I know my friend Adam says, well, I think it was they got the these heroes got the killing blow in, and that was important. But I do appreciate when a book gives these characters more to do, and maybe that has happened before this. But I felt like it was most re uh, relevant or open to me about it in this book, where Nolan did most of the work, because they put Ellen in a crippled state, and it was able to give Nolan more focus. So that was appreciated. But on the on the downside, though, Ellen gets a bit crippled on the personality, so that's kind of a meh. Um, so we're not accounting the villain because the villainary dupe doesn't really do much here. She just, uh, accelerates the transformation and heads out. Uh, getting to believe Tika herself. Now, look, Tika, I find, is the most interesting beast out of the three so far. Because she seems to either A, retain her personality, or B, she's actually smarter. And that's how she's able to resist it. But I firstly think it's more on the lines that Zuba's plan is going not as he expected to, so she felt the need to intervene on it. So that's how Leptika got probably a bit more her personality in check. But it, in a way, her personality kind of led to her demise, if you would say, because because she was so she was very egotistical. There's a lot of egotistical beasts, but she's probably up there of how egotistical he is. I think my friend, I think Silex, uh, Silexa, was it the cat, stone cat? Um, that the cat, stone cat beast, Silexa is more, more probably more uh, uh, cocky than she is, but she's up there though. The animal species that she is, you know, nightmare, or the nocturnal nightmare, but she's up there. I um, I don't really um have much to say on that because like there are several instances, four times perhaps where she gets cocky or has the opportunity to kill him, and it's not her strategy is normally to send traps or things at him before using her true powers. She'll send either the bats or like use the environment to stall him and then go for the kill, which is a nice. I do appreciate that creativity, but on the other hand, she has mind control, and she can just mind control Nolan and just keep him in one place. And I know at one point my friend Adam has mentioned well, maybe the iPad will stop this from happening, but no, it just so happens to be her weakness concentration. She needs concentration on the mind control for it to work. But if there's only one person and there's no way to stop that concentration, then there's nothing really stopping her. So, yeah. If I was in her position, I would have just gone for the mind control straight off the w straight in the way. That's just me. Um, but regardless, though, even though I don't agree with some of Leptika's decisions, I still enjoyed this book for what it was worth. Um, her other ability is that she can make screeches and it causes rocks to crumble down. And so And she can summon bats. Pretty um, good abilities to have for a bat. Her grasping claws doesn't really come into play. It would have been nice if they did. That's just me, though. Uh, her wings are awesome. And uh, overall, despite my uh, little nitpicks here and there, I did find it was equally balanced on the hero and the villain. So there were some nitpicks like I had, but I still think this is the best story-based book to me. That's just me. As for a beast perspective, probably the most interesting beast as well out of the four. So... Hopefully, when we get to the final book, um, I've Selkara, was it? Uh, hopefully, the finale will be good. I'm looking forward to uh, how it goes down, and I will see you guys for that, and the re full review and all that stuff. All that. As for the collaboration, we are getting closer. I don't exactly know when, but I think my friend Adam has said we're going to be doing it at some point in August. If things change, we'll uh, let you know somehow. Thank you for watching, guys. Till next time, like always, peace out.